Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's section number five in electromagnetic radiation, and this one is a really wild one. We're going to talk about the momentum of light, and remember, light is something, it's just pure energy that doesn't have any mass, and of course, from a, from a classical sense, when we think of momentum, P is simply the product of the mass of an object times its velocity, if the object has mass, and the units for that would be kilograms, meters per second. Definitely has a kilogram uh, component in the units here. And so when we talk about, about the momentum of light, you say, well, wait a minute, light doesn't have any mass. How can it have momentum? But it does. It turns out that when light bounces off a surface, it actually puts pressure on that surface, and therefore uh, we can surmise that it has momentum. So let's try to figure out how that works. So, Let's assume that we have a certain volume in space that has electromagnetic radiation in it, like light, and let's assume that that then contains a certain amount of momentum, and we call the momentum of that volume dp, and we'll call the volume dv. And so we can then say that the ratio of the momentum per unit volume can be defined as 1 over mu sub naught e times b times 1 over c squared. You say, where in the world did you get that from? So hang on, you'll see in just a moment how we derive to that. So I'm just making a statement that this is true. Of course, you have no idea yet if that's true or not. All right, but first of all, let's take a look at this part of the equation. That should now look familiar because that is actually the magnitude of the pointing vector. So we can say that this is equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector times 1 over c squared. And then we also learned that the magnitude of the pointing vector by definition is equal to the intensity of the light or the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation. So this can be written as I over c squared. So now the claim is that the amount of momentum per unit volume in space that contains electromagnetic radiation is equal to the intensity of that radiation divided by c squared. So let's see, if this is true, that means that the units of this must equal the units of this. And if it is, then we know that they're equal. So let's again come over here and say that the units of that, well, the units of intensity, uh, that would be watts per square meter, right? That's power over area, so that's uh, watts per square meter. And then we multiply that times 1 over c squared. And c is the speed of light, so that would be meters per second. That means we need meters square in the denominator per second, and that would be second square in the numerator. So that turns out that the, the units of dp dv, if it's equal to this, then equal watts times second square divided by meters to the fourth power. So let's see how we can then relate this to this. All right, so let's try to make that comparison. So if we start with watts times second squared divided by meters to the fourth power. Uh, remember that watts is joules per second. So now let's replace watts by joules per second. So this now becomes uh, joules per second times second squared divided by meter to the fourth power. You can see that this second cancels out that second right there. Let me close the brackets. Okay, now we're going to replace joules by newton meter because the units of joules is equal to newton meters. So this is equal to newton times meters times seconds divided by meters to the fourth power. And then you can see that this meter cancels out one of those. That gives us meters cubed. Now we're going to replace newtons by kilogram meters per second squared. Oh, I heard kilogram, so maybe we're on the right track there. So this is equal to kilogram meters, oh, meters goes here, kilogram meters per second squared. So that is newtons converted to its basic units. We still have time seconds in the numerator, and we still have meters cubed in the denominator. Okay, now again, we cancel this meters with one of those. That makes it meters squared. We cancel this second with one of those. And now notice what we have. We have kilogram meters squared per second squared. That's not quite where we want it to be. So let's go. That is kilograms divided by seconds times meters squared. Okay. So, well, wait a minute. This is not momentum. This is momentum per unit volume. So what if we put the dv on the other side of the equation? So now we know that the units of dp dv is equal to this. So the units of dp would be that times the units of volume. So if we then say, so these are the units of dp dv. So then if dp dv have units that are equal to kilograms, 
divided by seconds times meters squared and we now take the dv and we move it over here times dv that would be times the units of meters cubed and so we could then say that the units of dp is equal to kilograms meters cubed divided by seconds times meters squared and notice that this meter squared gets rid of two of those so now we can say that the units of dp i should write an equal sign because it's just the units of that is equal to kilograms meters per second and notice that those are the exact same units as the units i get from momentum when i have objects that contain mass so what we've done here is by using the equivalence of units we have determined an equation that defines the amount of momentum per unit volume in electromagnetic radiation which is equal to i times c squared and if we then want to find the momentum given within a certain volume of space we simply have to multiply the momentum per unit volume times the volume and then we get the momentum so dp is simply equal to i divided by c squared multiplied times dv so if i take the intensity of light divided by c squared and multiply times a certain amount of volume of space within that volume of space i'll have a certain amount of momentum contained within that light and this is huge this is the ability now to find out how much momentum is contained within electromagnetic radiation so remember that i of course is equal to um, the uh, i is of course equal to the magnitude of the uh, pointing vector which is equal to one over mu sub naught eb so if you want to write it like this we can say it's equal to one over mu sub naught times eb divided by c squared and then multiply the whole thing times dv and if you don't like it in terms of both e and b then remember that the relationship between e and b is equal to c times b so we could replace b by e over c so you could also write this as one over mu sub naught times e squared divided by c cubed times dv so oops, let me put a line there so we don't get confused so you can see that you can write this in various ways but in each case again it shows that we can actually find the momentum of uh, sunlight or the momentum of any kind of electromagnetic radiation and that's how we do that